At age 19, Casey Legler had already accomplished more than most, swimming at the 96 Atlanta Olympics and many other things. But while competing at the highest level, Legler was hiding a secret that would lead to a downward spiral. Watch this. At six foot two, 41-year-old Casey Legler has a cool confidence on the catwalk. Legler does not let height, age, or gender define who she is. When I was 36, I was signed to the men's board at Ford Models as the first woman to exclusively model men's clothes. Legler says for her, modeling male clothes has nothing to do with gender and everything to do with being fierce. The detail for me is the fact that I wear suits, but the spirit is about having the courage to and the space to be exactly who you are. But the road to finding her true self did not begin on the runway. It began 20 years earlier in the pool, where she swam competitively while growing up in the south of France. I feel quite lucky that I found swimming because everything turned off when I got into the pool. Legler says her teen years were no different than many others, just trying to fit in. But with her angst came drinking. I started drinking when I was 12. Drinking solved all of my problems. It made things quiet in the way that it was underwater. It made it so I didn't have to provide any sort of effort, physical effort, because that effort was so painful for me. And I just was able to relax. As her training increased, so did her vices. It wasn't until I was 18 or 19 that drinking was a daily, and using drugs at that point were a daily um, habit. Soon it would all catch up with her during the most important race of her career. In 1996, I qualified for the French team at the Olympics in Atlanta. But there, she suffered a stunning defeat. There's someone who won a gold medal. There's someone who won a silver. A world record was broken, and I placed 23rd. I was so ashamed, deeply ashamed. And for a long time in my adult life, I felt like I had failed. I didn't know how to talk about the fact that I was a young, you know, alcoholic and addict while I was swimming. I didn't know how to talk about the fact that I had basically bombed the race that you are supposed to win. Casey Legler shares her incredible life experiences in the memoir, Godspeed. Welcome, Casey. Great to have you here. Thanks. You know, if you think about it, finishing 23rd at the Olympics while on drugs and drinking is not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, everything's relative. Yeah. But I know you say in the book that you, you really feel like you were an accidental athlete mm -hmm. because, because you, you hated swimming. I did. I, uh, swimming was really hard for me. The uh, experience of the water getting into really cold water was really hard. The effort, I was also really lonely, experienced a lot of um, just a big emptiness on the inside of my body. And swimming just added to that. But it did take a mentor, you know, many years. The book ends on the first day of my sobriety, the first day of the end of my life. Um, but it did take a mentor, like I said, to kind of show me that if I had been able to get that far doing something that was so devastating, what if I was able, you know, to take that discipline and take that focus that I did get from swimming that I do still now have as skill sets as an adult mm -hmm. doing something that makes my heart sing? Right. Without, so I, without the haze of the drugs. Oh, no, yeah. Right. So it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, Do you, was it, did it feel like living a lie? Because I know you, you're very open about the fact that not only were you doing drugs during the swimming, you were, you were dealing drugs into some of the athletes. And I mean, was that torment? I mean, I think what was torment was feeling so apart and alone. Drugs were just a manifestation and in some ways a solution for me until it stopped being a solution. So, uh, you know, the swimming and the partying in, these are all, you know, the other athletes were athletes that I grew up with. We had all started 
knowing each other when I was about 12, 13, 14. And so in many ways, once we got to the Olympics, it was meant to be, and we had been trained for it to be a, a meet just like any other. Mm -hmm. You get to that level and you've been focused on it for as long. And so we just were doing what we had done all along, which was, in my case, training really hard. I was excellent at school. I got straight A's as well. And I also did a, a lot of drugs. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to see yeah, know, right? it's really what, what a combo you what know? you were going through. And that I mean, that that was the least of it. We're going to talk right after the break um, about quitting swimming, getting clean and sober and becoming a menswear model. We'll be right back with more. With Casey. So Casey Legler is a former Olympic swimmer who was competing at the highest level, all while drinking and using drugs on a daily basis. And there there were many reasons for it. And the just the tumult in your life. And you're open in the book about being sexually assaulted by a doctor. Um, and you say being being raped. Um, and things you, you admittedly never reported to the police at the time. I mean, this is not generally how people were dealing in the Me Too movement, you know, 10 years ago, if you got sexually assaulted, a lot of women chose not to, not to say anything about it. But how did those experiences affect you and how did they relate to what we've been talking about? Well, I mean, I think to your point, if I was young now, I feel so grateful that um, the gymnasts have come out. There were hundreds of them speaking uh, up, you know, for the experience that they had at the hands of Dr. Nasser. I'm because, so because grateful. Because you, you were sexually assaulted by a doctor. That's, yes, in, in, I was. In, I, in the 90s. Like sometime. in a medical setting. Yeah. Of course, very similar to them. I'm really grateful for the Me Too movement and the Time's Up movement because I do think that for me at the time, uh, what I experienced as normal from uh, you know just this perpetual violence against my body was not normal and should not have been happening. And I think that what the Me Too movement, Time's Up, all of these wonderful athletes that are coming up and speaking their truth is it's offering uh, another option and at the very least letting other young athletes know that if this is happening to them, it should not be happening to them and it's not normal. I also think that, um, you know, we uh, this would this wouldn't happen anymore you know i think that men in general understand that we're watching them i think that they know that we are you know aware we're a lot more awake uh, yeah. to the to, to these things and, and, and they're getting more for, awake to it too yeah, absolutely they're getting yeah. more awake too so you through through it all managed to get clean and sober uh, I did. At, on your 21st birthday that started yeah three days before i turned 21 <laughs> the irony right yeah. right yeah. when it's legal to drink yeah yeah, right. right when it's legal and fresh. Never had a legal drink. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then go on to become a successful and pretty famous model, but not not your typical model. True. Yeah. A model who, she's six foot two. That's right. A model who, <laughs> who wears exclusively menswear. Yes. So was that controversial for you? Had you been wearing menswear prior to the modeling world? Yeah, I mean, I, to me, it was quite unexceptional that I was, I mean, this is what I wear every day. It's what I was wearing every day. So in that sense, uh, it was not, not, it was not exceptional. I mean, I think what would be more exceptional is if I showed up to a friend's dinner in a gown of some sort. <laughs> um, in a prairie and, dress. <laughs> just a prairie dress, <laughs> hanging out. Um, and, uh, and, but what was exceptional was that I was the only one. Um, Andrea Pejic was the only other one that was out there at the time who was modeling women's clothes. And, um, and I think what was so special about it is that I felt like there was an opportunity to make space and make room room and, um, and for the young ones who might not be, you know, fitting into the gender conforming. So who might, if they're and I know girls, you're getting, you're getting that on the street. People yeah, stopping you and totally. saying, you make me possible. You make me okay. Yeah, I make them safer. I mean, I do think that invisibility, much like the Me Too and the Time's Up movement, you know, we're calling out some of these things that have happened similar to uh, homophobia and transphobia. This idea, you know, statistics do tell us that there is a high level of risk and a high level of violence on the bodies of these young people. And I think that visibility makes space for them to make it just a little safer for them to make it down the block. You're totally gorgeous, inside and out. Thanks, Thank Megan. You for sharing Thanks for having me. Yeah. So nice to meet it's you. Nice to meet you too. All the best. Good Thank luck you. with the book. Thanks a lot. We'll be right back. Hello, today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there, and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.